I'm Shana Kataya. I am the Director of Student Services here for the district, and I'm here with Leilana Cuse, who is our Student and Family Engagement Coordinator, Amy Daniels, who is our uh, one of our counselors here at Calkins Road and also our Standards Leader for School Counseling, and Martha McKenna, who is one of our school counselors at Menden Center. So thank you all so much for coming. And we're missing one of our counterparts who's ill tonight, so we thought we would spare you that. <laughs> Uh, so one of the things that we've been trying to do is really be responsive to our parent community around topics. So huge thank you to our PTSA, not only for the amazing snacks, always at our power hours and for being here, but also for helping us with um, the surveys to our parent community to understand what our parents are wanting to hear about. Um, so part of that survey gave us some of this information. And at the end of every power hour, we also survey parents who are here um, to be able to ask them, what else do you want to know? And did this meet your needs? Um, what other things do you want to know? So one of the things that we talked about after our last power hour, which was around helping our students with their stress and anxiety was parents saying we would also like some support with managing our own stress um, and anxiety, particularly uh, for those of you who gave us feedback on your RSVP around raising teenagers um, and um, some other pieces around students with disabilities and just um, parents that are feeling like they need more support with each other. So you'll definitely hear some of that tonight. And just that reminder with this picture here that this is the concept of putting that air mask on yourself first before you can help somebody else and really modeling that healthy coping behavior for our students. So all the things you hear tonight, some will be things that you've heard over time and that are tried and true and you've probably tried in your own lives. Some will probably be new to you. All of them are things that we can also use with our children. So um, hopefully you'll find some of those strategies that you can do together or help model and then um, help your children as they're coping with their own stressors on a daily basis. So with that, to start us out, I'm gonna turn this over to Amy, who is going to have you work through a little activity with the plate on your table. All right, so hopefully you're at a table where there's some markers and some plates. We have extras. Um, we're going to start with an activity just so that everybody kind of gets, gets to center themselves and ground themselves and understand what's going on in your own life. This is an activity that we were fortunate enough to do recently at our superintendent's conference day that really led to everybody doing some introspective thinking and some good conversation among all of us. So if you have a plate and a marker, I just want you to take a few minutes to think about what's going on in your own life that causes you some stress or anxiety and just start writing it all over the plate, okay? Everybody should have a pretty full plate. So think about all the different aspects of your life, maybe things that are situationally going on with you right now as well as longer, um, long-term stressors that are playing into your life. I know when I did it, I wrote children in like the hugest letters possible because I think for a lot of us, that encompasses a lot of our stress. So go ahead and take a few minutes to do that. Okay, it looks like people are starting to finish up. Um, what I want you to think about now and maybe underline these would be try to categorize some of your stresses. So maybe underline things that are longer term types of stress in your life, and then circle some of the situational things, like maybe you were running late today. That would be more situational than if you have an elderly parent who's struggling with health, that would be a longer term type of stress. So we're gonna underline any of the longer term types of stress and then circle any short term situational stuff. So the reason we did this, and I think it's really important, I think probably for all of us who are parents, our number one goal is to be there and be healthy and be there for our kids. So in order to do that, it's really important that we know ourselves, okay? And, and that we have some methods to take care of ourselves because in order to be the best parent we can be, we have to be the best person that we can be for ourselves. And that means taking breaks, taking care of ourselves. Healthier parents have healthier children which is just kind of what this slide is saying. The way parents look after themselves has a powerful influence on their children. Research suggests that when parents practice self-care, 
their mental health improves, and their levels of fatigue decrease. These improvements can consequently lead to increased use of positive parenting strategies, which then leads to better outcomes for children. And here's just some other research that we had found. If we're able to manage our emotions and stress, we will be able to be more consistent with parenting that encourages, guides, and reduces negativity, increase our social and emotional well-being for children. We will be more positive as parents with improved relationships with teens and improved youth externalizing as well as cognitive outcomes. Thank you. Great, thanks, Amy. Um, so as we move forward, um, we are going to first look at what we can do for our long-term stressors. So those things that you underline that are kind of just always there. We all have things in our life that are just in the background. And then we're going to talk about um, some strategies for those immediate moments where your heart's racing and the stress is increasing, or maybe that's happening for your child, and the types of things that you can do um, in those moments of stress. Uh, so one of the things um, that we have up here, just around all the research around being um, a mindful parent, so stopping and really thinking about the way that we're responding to our children. And when I first saw this on the slideshow, I laughed a little bit because um, I've done these types of power hours. I've even taught teacher center classes on responding to behavior in a mindful way and with an equity lens. And then I find myself in my house raising my voice about something that's really not important. <laughs> so this is a process and it's not about perfection, it's about taking that time, thinking and we do the best we can in the moment and being really upfront with our kids that we're, I'm working on this, right? I'm taking a deep breath right now because I'm feeling frustrated and walking away because that's what we want them to do in those moments as well. So uh, this is not about perfection. So some of the long term things that we do to manage stress are things that we no, um, and a lot of times they're the things that we know and then we feel guilty about because we don't find the time to do them for ourselves. So it's really about what, finding what works for you and then giving yourself a pat on the back when you do make the time to do that. And that could be that social connection, that friend that you um, need to connect with, even if it's just over the phone or through a text message and just filling your bucket in that way. Um, there's a lot of breathing exercises that you can do yourself. We'll talk through um, a few of those today. You can even do them with your children, right? You're counting your breath, breathe in for four, hold for four, breathe out for four. Um, that can help you when you're dealing with your child who's maybe heightened as well. Um, there's a few types of meditation that you can do, and that's not for everybody, but we we invite you to just give it a try. So we'll talk about some tools you can use. These don't have to be big, long parts of your day, um, but maybe just starting some of these habits for yourself once you've found um, what works for you. So we'll talk a little bit about gratitude journaling and journaling in general in a moment. Um, and then anything that you do that feeds that self-expression, if you love to paint, you love to crochet, you love to knit, uh, whatever that self-expression is. And then we had quite a few people in the um, RSVP say that they were interested in knowing, you know, how do we know how to reach out and find a good therapist? Um, finding someone to talk to, and now there's so much um, in the way of video conferencing for therapy, it makes it so much more convenient. So one of the tools that is great is psychologytoday.com. Um, when you go on there, you have vetted therapists and resources. You can read reviews. And then there's also some great resources on there like um, articles. So even um, some people had asked things about working with um, or having children with specific disabilities, obsessive compulsive disorder, ADHD, um, kids with tantrums. There are tons of um, articles and resources right on there and then you know that they're vetted. Um, so again that's psychologytoday.com. So one of the things that uh, has helped me personally but was recommended th um, through one of our amazing behavior specialists was this book called Atomic Habits. Um, I read this a couple times, uh, but you might not have time to read this. So if that stresses you out, I'm gonna give you the piece that was the most helpful for me. If you really wanna dig in, it's a great book, very worth the read. Um, so one of the things that they talked about in this book is something called habit stacking. So it's the idea of starting really small with a new habit and building success for yourself. So this builds on that idea of knowing what works for you. So if you say, well, I've always wanted to try journaling or I've always wanted to try meditation, but I just, I do it twice and then I 
kind of fall off and I never do it again. So the idea of habit stacking is to really look at your life and identify what are my actual habits, not things you have to think about, but things that you'll never go without. Brushing your teeth, making your cup of coffee, right? Putting your shoes on every day, the things that are your actual habits in life that you do every single day. And then kind of prioritizing for yourself, not five new habits, but one. So one thing that you prioritize that, that you feel like might work for you, and then adding that in to those moments on top of the habits you already have. So an example might be, um, I want to work on journaling. So I know at night, I'm always going to brush my teeth before I get into bed, and maybe next to my toothbrush, I'm gonna to prepare myself by putting something there, and it might be just a little post-it note, and I might just write down what I'm grateful for that day, and that's gonna be my, um, my form of journaling. So you wanna start as small as you can so that you can build um, and, and get some of that good intrinsic motivation. You don't wanna say I'm gonna start with uh, writing an entire page in a journal every day because that's going to be hard to, to keep up with. So if you have a beautiful journal you wanna write in, you put it next to your bed, maybe you're just going to list three things that you're grateful for that day. Um, but the idea is leaving yourself wanting more and feeling like you can do more but stopping yourself so that you're wanting to go back to it that next day. So it's really just about what are your habits Set yourself up for success by being prepared. So put that post-it note next to your coffee maker or whatever it is. Take those three deep breaths while you're waiting for your coffee to brew. Um, those types of things that help you start really, really small. So with that, we're gonna talk about just two more long-term um, things that maybe you could have at Stack. Um, one is journaling, and then the other one's gonna be around some of our sleep habits. Um, so journaling has been proven to be really effective in kind of getting our own emotions out um, and helping us to process things. And it really can be a form of meditation as well. So this helps us also to understand ourselves better, which helps us uh, to understand how we can move forward in ways that maybe are more productive if we're reflecting on our reactions to things or how we're perceiving the world around us. So again, starting really small, if this is something, might be something you already do, um, but doesn't have to be anything that costs you money, could be something that you choose to do on the notes app on your phone, could be just a piece of paper, it could be a voice memo, so it doesn't have to be a big, long, um, drawn out process. But if it makes you feel good to buy a lovely journal, and that's something that you can do, and that's going to help encourage you to, to keep this habit, um, then that, that would be great. But it's not about making it perfect, it's about just getting thoughts out on the page and again, just starting with a sentence or even a list. Two things you're grateful for each day um, and just start building that habit. So we talked about this a little bit, but more the idea of when you're habit stacking to think about how you can really be prepared for those things so that you're always, um, you're always approaching that habit with something right there as a reminder for yourself. Even something as simple as having something out, if it's a whiteboard that you already have your family calendar on or something that's already out there and you're just gonna write something in a little box every day on the calendar that you're grateful for, um, th those types of things have really been shown to help change our outlook of just stopping and thinking just for a moment around um, gratitude. And this part is hard uh, because sleep hygiene is something that we all know is so important and the more we worry about how we're not getting the sleep we need, the harder it is to go to sleep and then you start counting the hours that you're missing. Uh, but really important for us as adults but so important for our kids as well um, and that's really hard because the more tired we get, the more we might allow our child to go upstairs with the iPad just thinking of my own house, um, but really trying to minimize the media before bedtime um, trying to minimize um, those different stressors in the evening and really setting ourselves up for success to have a good night's sleep. Um, doing anything calming you can before bed. We'll share a couple apps with you in a moment if you, you know, want to do meditation with your child before bed or just sit in bed and listen to some calming music. Um, not getting yourselves too revved up right before bed if possible. Um, and then cut down on like that eating a sugary snack right before bed that might have you up more than you would like to be. So a few tools in this area to think about. We talked about the notes app in your phone. You could use that for a lot of different 
um, note-taking pieces, including your meditation and your journaling. Um, YouTube has some great free meditations that you can do uh, that, that will just walk you through. It could be a minute, it could be 30 minutes or longer. Even things like yoga you can find on YouTube for free. This um, little app um, icon at the bottom here is called Smiling Mind. And that has um, free meditations for very small children, belly breathing, little things you can do with your child all the way up to adults, very short to much longer. Um, and they walk you through all sorts of different purposes for meditation. And they have great voices on there, very calming. And then this is something um, that we've just started trying in our house. Um, there's partner journals. So there's all sorts of journals that you can do with your children. It could be between a parent and a child uh, where there's uh, prompts for you to be able to write something to each other. So you could write something to your child, leave the journal on their bed, they write back to you, um, leave it for you to be able to read. They have it between grandparents and children, um, between partners and spouses. So if that feels like something that might help you hold yourself more accountable and have a great um, way to be able to hold on to those conversations um, and memorialize those. Those journals are really great. We just happened to find ours on Amazon and this one was called Just Between Us. They have sisters ones, brothers ones, siblings. They can um, write back and forth to each other if you feel like that would be productive for your children to be writing to each other. Um, and so wrapping up this, this one piece again, we're just going to go back to where we started with which is we're going for a little bit of progress and um, being graceful and kind with ourselves here and not about perfection. So it's these small things that we're trying to do and then being really explicit also with our kids about this is something I'm trying because I have stress and this is something that I think might help me so that it really normalizes the idea of um, having healthy minds and bodies to be able to manage our stresses long term. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over. Hi, I just want to make sure that you can hear me. So these are techniques that I'm going to talk about that you can do really in the moment when you're physically feeling some of these negative emotions, um, like intense anger, stress, anxiety, worry, concern. Um, these are the emotions that may um, dysregulate your body physically. These are some techniques you can use right in the moment um, to help yourself feel more calm and regulated. So for the first one, progressive muscle relaxation. So this is a technique where you would pick a muscle group. They say to start with your head and go to your toes, or you can do the opposite. You can start with your toes and go to your head, and you would pick one muscle group. So if you are at your hands, you would squeeze and tense for five to 10 seconds, and then you'll slowly release. And what this does is it brings your brain to focus on that instead of focusing on the thing that you're worried about in the moment. And it also allows you to be more aware of your body and what you're feeling and brings you to a place where you can then relax your mind, body, and then process kind of what you're going through. Um, other things we kind of talked about is meditating, yoga, and deep breathing. So the 444, or if you breathe in for six and hold it and then out for eight, any of those deep breathing techniques to, again, kind of regulate your body if you're feeling like your chest is a little tight or you have that feeling like you can't completely catch your breath or you can't take and complete a deep breath, those are good times to kind of regulate your body before moving on to maybe um, working through whatever that you're um, feeling upset about. Um, aromatherapy is another great one. So, you know, even if you just carry an oil with you and some cotton swabs or you have an essential oil machine to kind of smell those, they're scientifically proven to give you kind of a boost of um, happiness and then kind of refocus physically on something else. So then again, you can go back to what was stressing you and you feel more ready to tackle it. Um, so TIPS, so this is a DBT, so it stands for Temperature, Intense Exercise, Paced Breathing, and Progressive Muscle Relaxation, which we talked about. Um, but the focus I want to talk about is the temperature piece. So when we're really feeling overwhelmed, um, heightened, anxious, worried, angry, our heart rate increases. So temperature is a great way to bring your heart rate to decrease. Um, cooler temperatures help with that. So doing things like opening a window if it's cooler outside or walking outside if it's colder. Um, holding snow is one that we tell our students and adults can do. Or just getting ice, whether that's holding ice or putting it on some of your pressure points such as um, right underneath your hand on your wrist, in your elbows, the back of your neck, or the back of your knees. So that will really shock your body to kind of refocus again and not 
um, stress about what's going on in the moment, but allow you to feel more calm to then again tackle the things that you feel the need to process through. Um, just admitting that you're having a difficult emotion can be really validating to yourself when you're alone. Labeling the feelings is also a good way to kind of model for um, your children and family members that may struggle with that. Um, and that will then allow you to kind of challenge any negative thinking pattern. You know, I know that especially with anxiety, we tend to go to the what ifs or we perseverate on things that we have no control on or, you know, it makes you feel like you can predict the future all of a sudden when we know we can't. So, you know, staying present and mindful in the moment and not jumping to the what ifs or challenging some unhealthy thinking patterns can be really great. Um, laughing, dancing, singing, all great things, very therapeutic in the moment that can kind of distract you and help you regulate. And then also just using I statements. So I know we are teaching our loved ones this all the time in schools, but it's also important for us to do that as well, again, to model, but um, to really focus on identifying your own feelings and then having the ability to process through that. Yeah, so an example of an I statement, so, um, um, when you're feeling upset, if you're able to, I even say like we have the color wheel, so pulling up different emotions that you can read through and just saying I'm feeling or I feel anxious. I feel anxious because of this. This is what I need to feel unanxious, right? So you're kind of self-talking yourself through what you're feeling and kind of how to solve your own issue in the moment. So Leilan started to talk about some of the kind of holes in our thinking that can cause problems. We start to believe those cognitive distortions. Um, so think about your thinking. It's so important to help your kids to learn to think about the thoughts that are leading to those feelings, those bigger feelings, um, like the what ifing. Um, so there may be the catastrophizing where you're just blowing things up much worse than it than it is thinking about the worst case scenario instead of maybe what's realistic. Um, one strategy we teach with students, young students, is the to consider the best case scenario, worst case, and then most likely. Um, and we try to actually catastrophize each end of those and make them kind of ridiculous um, to help kind of add some humor to it. Uh, so then mind reading is, is, you know, just assuming, making assumptions and jumping to conclusions about uh, what someone thinks about you or what they might be planning to do um, when you really don't have the evidence for that. Um, negative thinking, I kind of think about it as binocular vision where you're really zeroing in on details that are really the most negative. And sometimes it reminds me of when I used to review my kids' report cards. And I don't know about some of you, but you kind of jump to the <laughs> ones that aren't good. <laughs> but don't do that. So that is negative filtering. Um, Overgeneralization um, would be when you're using those extreme words with the kids, we'll talk about it as extremifying. Um, it's kind of a, a made up word where if you're saying um, catch yourself using the words never, I never do this, I can never do anything right, um, uh, I always fail at this, um, those extreme words that you, you really start to believe. You've built these patterns that are just, you really need to rework them. Um, the me or them thinking is more of a, um, it's called like, oh, what is it? It's um, it's basically internal control um, fallacy. So you're like, you think that you're at fault for everything. You're going to turn everything on you. Rather, the them is the external control where you, you, you don't think you have any control. There's no agency. And so you feel helpless. Um, that kind of thinking can be very um, detrimental. So rewiring and reframing your thinking, um, really it it's ba goes back to the mindfulness and noticing where you are with your thoughts, accepting them, but then knowing that and having the confidence that you can change that. Um, so thank goodness for what we 
now know about neuroplasticity and reworking those those neurons and um, really creating new pathways that are going to be more natural going forward. Like any new habit, you just have to keep reworking those. Um, and I am attached to this one saying that an unknown monk told somebody, which was they were trying to meditate and it wasn't going well. And they said, um, you're not practicing, you're practicing judgment, impatience, blah, blah, blah. Practice meditation, practice patience. So whatever you're actually practicing will grow. So with that. Thank you so much. Easier said than done. But that really stuck out to me when we were talking through all this that um, thinking about what it is that we're practicing and what we're spending a lot of our time and our minds on. Um, and sometimes those are the more negative thoughts and those are the things that grow. Uh, so before we open to questions, we wanted to put our money where our mouth is here and um, practice a very brief meditation together. So if you're comfortable, have you just close your eyes, just I promise this is only one minute, um, or if you're more comfortable just looking down um, in front of you, that's fine as well. And we're just going to walk through this brief piece. Take this one minute to connect with your breath. Just feel yourself breathing in and feel yourself breathing out without trying to manipulate or change your pattern of breathing. Relax your jaw. Relax your shoulders. Notice how different one breath is from the next. It's the same with life. One day, one moment, different from the next, ever changing, ever evolving. What is going through your mind right now? Let it slip away. Just for this moment, come back to harmony. You are safe. You are accepted. You are forgiven. And you are loved. It's so very brief. Um, and again, there's a thousand different free um, very brief moments that are guided for you and the hope would then be that you can guide yourself through a few um, deep breaths because those small things really do change. Um, as we watch our teachers doing this with kids in a classroom, um, you'd be really surprised how quickly we can go from a lot of elevated activity to a completely different mindset. Um, so before we turn it over, I just want to say this is um, hard, seemingly simple things that are not easy uh, to fit into our own lives, but um, as a parent, you know, when you're dealing with children who have some big emotions or some big worries or some big behaviors um, at home, it, it's just exponentially more challenging because we want so badly to be doing the right thing and reacting in the right moment to our children. Um, so know that if you are worried about your child, your children, um, an incident, your reaction to something, their reaction to something. Um, this is not meant to be a one-time um, sit and get. So all these people that are here, um, our building administrators, all the way up to our superintendent and our board of education, everyone on this panel, your school counselors, principals, that's truly what we're here for. So it's never too small of an item to call if you're worried about your child, if you're not sure how to handle an emotion with them, you're not sure um, how to find them support outside of school or in school, always call. Um, that's, th that's the most important thing to us is your child's physical and emotional safety. So with that, I will turn it over if there's any questions. Thank you so much. Um, first of all, thank you for um, the school district for hosting this, um, the series of parent uh, power. Um, and I learned a lot. And I communicate with the school counselor of um, my kids' school, Madden Center, Ms. McKenna. I've been so grateful. And she knows I'm an anxious type. Like, I've been anxious all my life. And after I had kids, um, I, I feel, OK, it's not right. And then I didn't know what's going on until I see my 10-year-old. Now she's really anxious, 
more anxious than me. And then I said, I need to change. And, and um, I've been communicating with um, Ms. McKenna, and, um, and I gained my strength. And starting from this April, I took actions and applied for Peace for School District position. And now I'm working yeah, full time there um, because I, I feel um, schools have been mysteries to parents. And I don't know what's going on at school because I grew up in China. I came here when I was 26. And I didn't know about the culture, even the language. My kids laugh about my vocabulary, accent. But um, yeah, I just want to uh, get to know more about uh, what's going, what you are doing like as a teacher from your perspective. And then I can learn from a parent's perspective, like what parents learn. So I want to be a bridge probably in the future um, to help my kids as well as um, contributing to the community. So, um, and um, I just want to, um, I also want to share, so that's, that's my, um, yeah, uh, learning process and, and the actions I took. It's a little bit extreme, like you don't want to quit your job and take an, a position in Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they need people though. Um, but I just want to share a quote uh, from Bruce Lee, uh, which I came across outside of our room um, in Sutherland High School. I, I now work there. Um, it's so well said that I now um, talk to myself this way and I share with my kids and I think that's very magical because it's, it's, uh, it's a very uh, easily accepted by kids. It's, it's, it's um, related to spells. So Blues Lee said, don't, talk, uh, don't speak negatively about yourself, even as a joke. Your body doesn't know the difference. Words are energy and cast spells. That's why it's called spelling. So, yeah, change the way you speak about yourself and you can change your life. What you are not changing, you are, um, what you are not changing, you are also choosing. So, um, now whenever uh, my kids are uh, anxious, I would say, okay, uh, you are casting spells on yourself. So, so they, yeah, <laughs> so it worked. So that's my sharing, thanks. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's unbelievable. Art Room at Sutherland High School. Well done. <laughs> Thank you so much, really. Um, and I think very courageous to share, you know, your own worries that, that you've had, but then um, the support of the school as the first step. So, and normalizing, having that anxiety and worry is so great, such a great model. Thank you for sharing. Any other questions? Can I jump in there? Yeah, please. I, I love what you said, and I will tell you, I'm an extremely anxious person and have two out of three really anxious children of my own, and I'm like totally vibing with what you're saying, and I just think that um, the more that I've made myself kind of just talk to them about my anxiety and about you know what and I will say like I will say oh, I'm feeling really anxious about going into this meeting today I can't wait till it's over and you know and they will text me like how was your meeting how did it go you know and it's so you support each other um, I think that's the best you can do and that you must be such a wonderful role model for anyone who's anxious I mean that's so great that you accept it and you're learning and you know you're growing like we all are um, I also love, I know I, that might be a little extreme, everybody can't come and work, right, for schools, but I think that's awesome. And I do want to just grab onto what you said about, we don't want anything to be a mystery here, so, because I know that that causes me anxiety when I don't know what's going on in my kids' school. So, just to reiterate what you said and what Shana said, like, always call. I know that it's super anxiety provoking when you change levels too. So when your child goes from elementary to middle or middle to high and we don't want it to be a mystery. You know we have great mental health teams at all the buildings and that's what we're here for is to answer questions at any time. Thank you, Amy. Was that a hand? <laughs> I'm not a mic person. So I just wanted to say as a parent and as a staff member here, thank you, um, like the kids do pick up on us. Like I know my own children when I'm like 
they're like this. Um, so I try to be really mindful with the kiddos in front of me in my classroom of the same thing because they're like sponges. They really, like when my kids are having a hard time at home, if I can just breathe, it makes a big difference. Um, and then like to piggyback off of what you said too, go to the, like let your teachers know, let the kiddos teachers know because they're the ones that spend the most time um, with the kids. I would start there first, just send us an email seesaw, whatever your method of communication is for your teachers, because sometimes we don't know what's going on at home. They're different in our classroom than they are at home sometimes. Thank you so much. Yes, I just had a parent conference for my own child, and the child that I describe is very different than the child that they know, so they don't realize that you know, we might have had a really hard morning about something that wasn't even a big deal, but that anxiety kicks in, and sending that quick email to the first period teacher or to the counselor just saying, rough morning at home, heads up, um, th those types of things we really do appreciate, and just allowing you just put a little extra eye on someone, um, give them that little extra boost they might need. Uh, that's really a great thing to do. So I'm here as a parent. I, I need a lot of therapy, and, and I'll probably just stay here until around 9 or 10 tonight. But, so I just want to offer just a little bit of insight. I have uh, two student, or two children that are in college now, and, and both of the presidents of the college said the same thing. And that was that you'll probably hear from them in October or shortly after that they're there, and they're going to dump a lot on you. And then you carry that stress with you. And, but they feel better because they got it all off their chest. So when I think about the theme of tonight, it's about helping us. Forget about the kids for a second. It's about helping us um, be able to process our student stress and the suggestions that, are, that, that was uh, reviewed at the beginning. I don't know if you'll ever find the one that's right for you. Um, it may be multiple, it may be different ones at different times. <clears throat> but I, for me, I think it's your mindset, knowing that kids are more resilient than we give them credit for. If they're talking to you, it's a real good thing. After they talk to you, it's now up to you to find out a way to deal with what they just shared with you, right? And so I think that's a big part of today, because I, I, a lot of when, when students share, your children share stuff with you, it's their way of vocalizing and getting off their chest, getting rid of their anxiety and putting it on you. And so we need to find healthy habits uh, in a healthy mindset uh, to, to deal with that. But I think the, the light at the end of the tunnel is also knowing that you're here because you care. Um, my experience is that anytime we've worked with caring parents who are willing to listen to their children, there's typically a good outcome. And so thank you for all being here and, and making sure, and, and I'm hoping that when you leave here, you're mindful of being mindful around the stress that you have after your children are dealing with something. Because you'll, you'll get through it, they'll get through it, and everything will be okay. Thank you. Another great resource along those lines is the Center for Parent and Teen Communication. It's, the, it's a great Facebook page and it, it's the work of um, Ken, Dr. Ken Ginsberg, and it's all about how we build resilience in our children. And I've, it's relieved my anxiety as a parent a lot of times because sometimes I've said, they're going to have to just really work that through. You know, they've unloaded on me, but in actuality, they're really going to have to work it through. Um, that Facebook page has a lot of, I think there are 100 or word less articles on all different categories of parenting. And I feel like every word he says is a gem, and I've referred back to it so many times. That's great. Thank you. Uh, what Amy said just resonated with me. Can't help it. Sorry. <laughs> like our circuit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you said that when they unload on you, you know, I think if you can change the mindset around that receiving that, you are not responsible to, for fixing everything. Sometimes you're just holding on to that and being that ear. Because if you're fixing it, you're telling them that they are not capable, mm -hmm. that they need you for every problem. So I think that that's a big one. So take the pressure off yourself 
lend an ear and just be glad that they're verbalizing it and sharing and communicating with you. That's great, and that's a great reminder of the other power hour that we did around supporting our kids as they have worry and stress. So these are all recorded and posted online. That one had great reminders for each level, elementary, middle, and high school, of how we respond to our kids. And that was the big takeaway I took as a parent was, um, you can be ex explicit with your kids. Are you just venting right now? Um, or do you want to, do you need support with a plan to, to help you? Because a lot of times they're venting, you're up all night worried, and then they went out with their friends at college and they woke up in the morning and they don't know why you're, you're still worrying about it, right? So um, asking them what they need from you in that moment uh, can, be, can be really helpful because we don't have to have all of the answers. Any other questions? Yeah, Colleen. Thank you. Um, I just want to say thank you for doing this. Um, I think there's some important pieces that PTSA can certainly share here. Um, one of them is, um, and, and I'm speaking personally too, and, and perhaps other people can maybe attach those a little bit, but I think sometimes parents hesitate to reach out to teachers. Um, you know, if our kids have a bad morning, I think a lot of parents do that. Hey, kids, you know, we had, a, we had a bad morning, let them know, just so that there's eyes on. But there's probably a bit of a fear of judgment there, right? So that if you are letting school know that there is some kind of chaos at home, um, that, that maybe the parents aren't getting the support like they would it, tonight, because there's just a little bit of fear of like, oh my gosh, it may seem like we have things together, but we totally do not have things together. So, um, you know, I just don't know how else we can share about that, that we can send this message that, you know, teachers do want to know because we're a team. We're a team and we get our kids there together. So, um, you know, I, I'm not sure what to do with that, but I can sit, certainly can sit in my own space and worry about that. But I imagine other people probably attach and can relate to that a little bit too. Um, and then also worrying, you know, does that reflect on my child, right? Like, what does that do for my child? If, if I'm sharing this information, what does that do for them? So again, I don't know necessarily where to go to this comment, but I do think that it's a part of why parents may not reach out for support out of fear, out of judgment. So you know, sharing these resources and sharing the message that we're a team and, you know, there, nobody's alone and we can do this together certainly is important. Thank you so much. I think that's a big piece around just the social media and everything that we're inundated with too is that there's all this perfection out there and none of us have it together. So um, I think it's really a big relief <laughs> to people when it's like, okay, you're also struggling. Your children are also arguing with each other. You're having trouble getting out of the door in the morning, right? So there's no one who has this all together. Um, but the more we can normalize and talk about it, um, it really is healthier for everybody because um, there's support in numbers. And um, one of the other supports I wanted to mention was we have a, um, a certainly our, our PTSA, we also have a group called SEPTA, our special education PTA. That group has become so strong and supportive in the last few years. And um, they do a lot of great learning and support for parents as well. So I know some people had specific questions um, around supporting students. Um, so um, if there's other things we can do with that group to bring more learning um, specific to that group, we would love to do that as well. So um, certainly reach out um, through that group for additional opportunities. Love that. November 6th, SEPTA meeting for parent burnout for parents of students with disabilities. That's amazing. Great. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, please reach out um, if there's anything at all that you need. If you didn't sign in, we'd love to have just your name and email. Um, we'd like to follow up with everybody just with an um, opportunity for you to give us some feedback. And then if there's any other follow-up that you'd like, please, please let us know. And thank you so much for coming out. Have a great night. <laughs>